I'm Owen Bigelon. This is the Inside Edge video blog. Okay, let's talk about the current status of the Vancouver real estate market. I'm mostly going to concentrate on condos here. Vancouver condos, downtown, Mount Pleasant, Kitsilano, surrounding areas here to the, to the downtown core. So as expected, uh, I was tweeting about it uh, leading up to the end of July that uh, the Real Estate Board of Greater Vancouver released the July statistics. And as expected, uh, this was one of the strongest Julys we've seen in over a decade. Uh, sales are way up, way above what they normally are for July. Uh, listings are down. I think it's about 16% uh, from what our average should be at this time of year. Uh, prices are edging up. The best stat that I always tell people, really the only stat you really need to know about that'll give you just a quick snapshot of where the market's at is the active sales to listings ratio. And across the board for condos, townhome, and detached home is running between 24 and 26 percent. So anything over 20 percent is considered a seller's market. So it is a fairly strong seller's market now across the board. Now, if you broke that down into, say, good quality one bedroom condos in downtown Vancouver, priced under 675, that act of sales to listings is probably hovering close to 35 or 40. Extremely strong seller's market. I would say the same thing with good quality starter level detached homes in areas like Renfrew or Grandview. Um, uh, those areas uh, priced under 1617 for a good Vancouver special, probably hovering over 30 for the act of sales to listings ratio. So strong, strong seller's market, which is to be expected. Where this will go, I have no idea. I don't make predictions. The market could take a turn this fall. There sure is, as always, a lot of dark clouds out there. You've got Evan Sindel going on another tirade here saying, just wait, you know, the market market is going to head for a correction here, give it a little more time. Maybe he's right. Who knows? But what I've often said here, if you are saving or currently saving for the down payment on a principal residence, whether that's a one bedroom condo or your first detached home, stay the course. If you're already qualified and ready to go and you're currently looking, if the right house comes along, pull the trigger on it. Don't worry about what the market's going to do six months from now or a year from now. It should be a little concern to you when you're buying a principal residence. This is a 30 or 14 year need for you. I can guarantee if you buy that house today, keep it for eight to 10 years, which is kind of my golden holding period, you are gonna do fantastic. And the other thing I've often said too, people always act, act like there's some sort of magic utopia. You either buy or you go into this rental world, which is fantastic, cheap rent, wonderful landlords, you never have to move, your rent stays cheap forever. And that is not the situation in Vancouver, as people know. You rent or your own, the hard part is getting the down payment. Once you're in, your cost to hold that property as an owner is about the same as what you're paying to rent. And renting is gonna get you nowhere long-term in a city like Vancouver. But let me comment on a couple of other things here. The state of the condo market right now, because I still see some people on Twitter here, they've always got another excuse. The July stats came out and they were off the hook. Prices are up, sales are way up, <clears throat> but they've always got another stat that they can try and throw out to show you that the market is not as strong as people think it is and that the condo market is on borrowed time. And I'll give you some frontline stories here. I mean, the good quality one bedrooms, one in dens, even two beds, on the good stuff that I like to go after, when I'm representing my buyers, <coughs> I can tell you, excuse me, is, is back to getting into bidding wars on a lot of this stuff. So I follow a couple of guys on Twitter and I, I enjoy some of the, the, these Vancouver real estate uh, guys on Twitter on some of them. Uh, and th there's one guy that I follow and I enjoy his tweets. Uh, he's got some good perspective on things. He's pretty bullish on de uh, detached homes in the east side, which I am too. Um, I've often blogged about, you know, your best appreciation over time is if you can get into a, a nice detached home with a mortgage helper or two in wherever, Fraser View, Renfrew, Grandview, Renfrew, it doesn't matter. Buy a good quality detached home on a standard lot and you're going to do incredible. But some of these people are, are calling for a little bit of the uh, early or the demise of the Vancouver condo market uh, because of COVID and people don't want to ride elevators and all that other stuff. 
And I'm going to do another blog on this later this month, so stay tuned about this flight to the suburbs and people wanting to get out of condos. Uh, don't buy it. Uh, but the reason I want to talk about it is there really is two types of condo worlds out there. And I've done many blogs on this. You know, when I'm on the buying side representing a client, if that client comes to me and let's, for argument's sake, say he's looking for an investment unit because it's a little different with an investment unit. If you're buying a personal or unit for to live in as a principal residence, there's a little more emotion involved there. You know, you might need a unit. This what might play into into the into the buying equation might be the proximity to work or a park or a dog walk or your favorite restaurant or friends and family. With an investment unit, the emotions out of it. I'm going to represent my clients, get them the best unit possible that's going to give them the best cap rate, the best ease of being able to rent it and keep good quality tenants in a good building that doesn't have issues. And that's probably the most important thing. A well-run, well-managed strata. Uh, that's our number one priority. So when I'm doing that and someone says, says to me, oh, and I've got a budget of 675, want a good long-term hold for an investment unit. You know, I could probably look on Paragon right now and come up with 100 units, 100 one-bedroom units that is going to fit his price category. But after I weed that down to stratas that I like, stratas I don't like, maybe the price of the units, a lot of stuff is overpriced, the location of that unit within the strata, et cetera, et cetera. I've got a, a myriad of filters that I've developed over the last 25 years. You know, most of these guys are surprised when I send them one listing two listings, three listings maybe. And of those, most of them are just listed and they're gonna be looking at offers next week, so chances are we're gonna be in a multiple offer situation. That's about what it boils down to. There, you can't lump downtown one bedroom condos, let's call it, in one homogenous group. There's the good, the bad, and the just downright ugly. And when I'm representing buyers, I'm only looking at the good stuff, the best stuff. It doesn't mean that some of the stuff that's in the middle category, which is, oh, let's call it okay, that could still be viable for many people. Maybe because it is a principal residence, it's close to their work, it's close to a dog walk or whatever. It can still be a good buy. But I'm under the belief that why get a good buy? Let's just wait for an excellent unit to come up in one of my preferred buildings that I like to keep an eye on. And even then, some of these units that come up in some of these buildings that I prefer, these stratas, even then maybe the unit's overpriced or maybe it's second floor above the parking entrance, parkade entrance, still might not be suitable. So it's really a tale of two condos. Don't lump all downtown condos into one homogenous group. You know, for sure, there is a lot of stuff downtown I've blogged about many times here that I would not touch with a 10-foot pole for a number of reasons. Mainly, the strata is not well taken care of, not well run, they've got levies coming up. Maybe they've got major insurance issues, and that's a big epidemic right now, as we know as well. In the good stratas I've been buying all summer, you know, they've all had insurance increases. I mean, I can give you from my point, from my personal building that I live in right now, I'm in one of the best run stratas in downtown Vancouver. Our insurance went up about 50%. We had no claims or anything else, and our premium still went up 50%. But that equated from an annual policy on the strata of 86,000, it went up to like 120. So hardly gonna break the bank. Worked out to about $400 more per owner. And that's the way a lot of these good stratas are. Some of them have had bigger increases. I've had some really good stratas that I, in buildings that I sell in quite, uh, quite a bit have gone up 100%, but it's taken the policy from 60 to 120 and you've got 200 units. So it's not gonna break the bank. But you have to understand it's really two worlds of condos out there. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that again, I would not touch with a 10 foot pole. You know, my job and what you wanna do when you're hiring a realtor, if you're looking for an investment unit, you better be hiring a realtor who knows the downtown market or Kitsilano or Mount Pleasant or Fairview intimately knows the good stratas and you're not going to know all of them. I certainly don't, but you've at least got a core group of good quality buildings that you're continuously selling and getting your clients into. And that's the big thing that a lot of people 
you know, tend to miss here. They lump all stratas that everyone's going to get out of the strata market. Insurance is going through the roof. They're not well run. And that's just not the case. But I will say the good stuff is rare. For every 10 units listed, as I say, I might be interested maybe in one. Actually, it's probably for every 25 that are listed downtown. I might be interested in one. There might be a couple others there that are okay. Still might be a good buy if they're priced right and the location of the unit within the strata. But depending on my client's needs, why not just wait a month or six weeks or whatever until one of the good prime ones comes up? That's how I've always kind of done business. But in a nutshell, market right now, as we speak, end of summer 2020 is pretty healthy. And I laugh at some of these pundits on, the, on, the, on Twitter that will come up with a new set of stats, some bizarre stats that will show you otherwise. Again, I'm not a big believer on stats anyways. Um, you know, statistics and really studying that kind of stuff is great if you're going to be a flipper, if you're looking to buy homes and flip them. But if you're buying a principal residence, buy the right home, hire the right realtor, negotiate the price on a good quality unit or a good quality home, whether that's an east side or west side, and then enjoy the house. Live in it for 10, 20, 30 years and then take a look at it. Take advantage of the 2% interest rates we've got right now. Don't try and overcomplicate things with this endless stream of data and statistics. I get so many people that will send me emails and comments in my YouTube blog here about worrying about pulling the trigger during the COVID times here. And what would happen if the price goes down 10% in two years from now? The answer to that is nothing. You just stay in the house and enjoy the house. That, that's what you have to sign up for when you're buying any asset like real estate or stocks. You're never going to find a time when you buy a home in Vancouver or buy a S&P 500 stock that it's going to go up indefinitely forever. That isn't the way it works. But it shouldn't bother you because you've got a long-term need there. You're either putting that money away for retirement in 30 years or you're buying your principal residence. So don't overcomplicate things. And that's one of the things that holds so many people back. And in this day of social media and, and Twitter and all these statistics that many of them are made up, these stats that I see. You know, there's the old saying, the lies, damn lies and statistics. The only source for statistics is the Greater Vancouver Real Estate Board. One of the best stats to look at is just active sales to listings ratio. Most people don't really need to know any more than that. And it's not going to make any difference anyways because none of us know what's going to happen this fall. Looks like we're going to be headed for a recession, maybe a depression, still lots of people unemployed, lots of worry out there. But as long as you've got a job, you're qualified for the mortgage, you're not over leveraging yourself, you're not buying too much house, and you've got an 8 to 10 year need then I would suggest you just buy the house and enjoy it and tune out a lot of the short-term speculation from these amateur economists, that most of which are just absolute fakes and phonies, in my opinion. I'm Owen Big Len. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing to my YouTube channel. I'll see you next week.